Everybody, cameras. Yep, everyone who's on the app, cameras. Welcome back, everyone. Um, this is Brother Doug. Um, we are the Wigan by Yahuwah Fellowship Group and Yahuwah Almighty and Yahushua Messiah. So we are going to be capping off this study of the last great day. So this is part two, the last part of this study. I will be reading our last scripture here, which is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verses 17 to 20. I'll be reading from the Bretons 1851 English Septuagint translation, which says... Let me just get it up here on the shared screen. So 65, start at verse 17 here. It says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered. And it, whoops, I'm not in the Septuagint. Whoops, my bad. For there shall be a new heaven and no, new earth, and they shall not at all remember the former, neither shall they at all come into their mind. But they shall find in her joy and exultation. For behold, I made Jerusalem a rejoicing, and my people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and will be glad in my people. And there shall no more be heard in her the voice of weeping or the voice of crying. Neither shall there be any more a child that dies untimely. No more stillborns, no more babies dying in the womb, no more babies dying when they're not even at one years old in the hospital. That's never going to happen again. Or an old man who shall not complete his time, meaning, you know, when you have people getting elderly and they're, they're dying in untimely deaths for elderly people, like, you know, maybe 50s, 60s. Um, for the youth shall be a hundred years old, meaning the youngest person, the youth shall be a hundred years old. And the sinner who dies at a hundred years old shall also be accursed. So it's a curse to die at a hundred years old. That's what the Septuagint is saying in those days. In the, in the millennium, this is the context. So, As a sinner. Yep. A sinner, basically. So sinners are going to be the ones dying at a hundred years old. So that means the righteous, it would. The righteous are going to be living to what they were in the beginning. It's going to go back to what it, the way it was when Adam was living. Uh, probably even more than that. But Adam in the beginning, when sin first entered, you still had people living to eight hundred, nine hundred. Uh, I think the millennium is going to be like that, but even more. You know, there's going to be immortality, you know, for some people, for the first fruits, I believe, because I believe the first fruits are actually going to have resurrected bodies. So, I mean, that, that would mean they would be immortal. So, um, but that's pretty much the end of this study. Um, I'm going to unmute my brothers and sisters if they want to add anything. Um, Sister Sally, Sister Sadie, Brother Tobias, I know you guys You guys can unmute yourselves if you want to add anything that maybe came to mind or anything, or Sister Shushana, Brother Dennis, if you have anything to add. Well, I'd like to add the fact that this day represents that time of the Great White Throne Judgment, in which all the rest of the dead come to life. Uh, that were not raised in the first resurrection. And the reason for their resurrection is so they can have the books open to them, including the book of life, which will teach them the truths that we know now um, because they lived and died without knowing they have a savior and without knowing that they can be saved and and live eternally and they'll be shown the Torah and how to live by it and um, I believe a lot of them will choose to live by it and uh, that's what the day is about um, Messiah stood and he cried aloud if anyone thirsts let him come unto me and out of his innermost parts shall flow rivers of living water which means life eternal. And this is what I wanted to say. 
and add anything? Mm, that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's, I don't know how to top that. Uh, that's pretty great. Um, also, if anyone's interested, you, there's some cross reference here. You can look for your, up for yourselves where Sister Shushan just quoted from. Okay, you got tons of these from the Tanakh that Yahushua is probably referring to. When he says, out of him comes, uh, flows rivers of living water. Zechariah 14, 8, Psalms 36, 8 and 9, Isaiah 44, verse 3, Jeremiah 2, verse 13, and others. So if you would like to look look up for them for yourselves, I can list these on the description of our video for you to look them up for yourselves. So basically, he's not bringing up a new concept, a concept at all. He's pretty much telling you, you know, I'm the one who the scriptures are referring to that out of my belly flows living waters. So, so he's actually give, showing a fulfillment of prophecy in, in that verse, actually. So that's the only thing I wanted to add. But, um, so, all right, well, thank you for joining us today. And I wanted to also say to all of our brothers and sisters, I hope you had a great feast of tabernacles and a great last eight day, um, the last great day. And, um, this, this day for us, I don't, I don't want to speak for everyone, but for me, it's, you know, it shows a lot of the first resurrection, the new heaven, new earth. It's a time to really be looking forward to what this means prophetically this day. And so it's it's a great day to be excited about. We'll be uh, tabernacling with the Father and the Son, literally face to face, as Paul says, you know, in that day. So that, that's something to be in um, joyful about, excited about. So, um, thank you for joining us today. Um, and thank you. Hopefully you got something. Hopefully this message that we all brought to you, um, was a Baraka to you. It, it baruch you. And, um, thank you for joining us. Shalom. 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 Thank you. Thank you.